Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching and welcome back to this week's Pick a Card reading. Today's topic is a very interesting one that occurred to me over the course of the week. So I'll tell you a little bit how I construct these because I think it's kind of interesting to know a bit of behind the scenes info as to how I put one of these together. So the first thing I started thinking about was the planet Venus. And after I did the Rahu one, immediately I got the feeling that Venus wants to be next. And I have the feeling that the faster moving planets are going to be really good to work with in these pick a card readings. Uh, for example, I'm not getting too much of a vibe from Saturn <laughs> about the pick a card readings. I get the vibe that Saturn is happy that I'm doing this because it's a vehicle through which I can serve. And I get the sense that Saturn is very happy about, you know, this kind of activity. But equally, I get the feeling that, you know, Saturn's not straight up in the queue wanting to be part of it. Whereas Rahu was number one, we've got Venus now, and, you know, Mercury and Sun, I'm starting to think about those a little bit. Um, also, I'm, thinking as well about topics that we can do. So, well, I'll talk you through the construction of this one. So as I started contemplating Venus, at first I thought it was just going to be a message from Venus. And then I was having an email conversation with a friend and she said to me, you deserve all the happiness in the world or something lovely like that. And the word deserve just really struck me very powerfully. And I thought, wow, deserve, yeah. I was like, I started to look at that word. And as I started to contemplate that, I thought this would actually be a wonderful topic for this reading. Because I thought maybe some of you would also like to explore this within yourself. And as I started thinking about it, I started to realize that deservability is really key to magnetizing what it is that we want. It's a, a, it's a feeling that we have within that we feel we deserve something. And I think the more we feel we deserve it, and this is not entitlement, so let's not confuse it with feeling entitled. I think that's, a, that's an egotistical kind of thing. But in our being, if we feel that, you know, it's, it's that feeling of what's your birthright? It's that feeling of, um, you know, that you're God's child. And, and I suppose it kind of links in with innocence as well. Because when I started to really get into this and think about it, I realized that deservability or feeling deserving as an emotion, yes, it's a way of magnetizing what you want and bringing it in. And you're kind of doing something. You're not just being neutral. And I think me, I'm neutral a lot, or I, I try to be anyway. But like if you're not feeling neutral, if you're not feeling deserving, then you might be in some of the lower emotions. And those lower emotions are things that will block our good. And, you know, for me, I haven't been experiencing too many blockages as such, but like I have been in neutral a lot. And when that word deserving came into my world, I kind of went, oh, wow, do I, do I really feel like I deserve good things? And I started thinking about it. And I started thinking that if you're not feeling deserving, yeah, you might be feeling shame or you might be feeling guilt. You might be feeling some of the lower emotions unconsciously, right? Or subconsciously. Uh, if you're in neutral, well, then you're probably fairly happy with where you are and, you know, um, that's good too, right? So I started thinking about all these things. Now, what are some other things about deservability? I'm just going to read my notes here because I did write a couple of little notes before I put this together so I said feeling okay I'll just read this out feeling that we deserve success is key to our enjoyment of the good things in life even if we get what we want if we don't feel we deserve it we can't enjoy it yeah I, I think that's a very important point when we think about this topic of deservability if we don't feel like we deserve it that thing we want we, we may not enjoy it anyway and the whole reason why you want it is to enjoy it right you just want feelings of enjoyment and I've got a note here, feeling deserving of the great things we want is the first step 
in manifesting it. Absolutely. And I think this is a really nice tie-in with the planet Venus because she is very much about, yes, she's about love, she's about romance, she's about relationships, sure. But she's about, um, you know, do we feel we deserve it? Do we feel worthy? Do we feel... Do we feel worthy of that great partner or that great love coming in to our lives, you know? Because they might be great, but if we don't feel worthy, we can't enjoy it. And if you look at your astrology chart, I'll be quite quick. I realize we'd go on, you know, a few minutes here, but I mean, you can always skip this and just go straight into your reading. So this is for people who like to hear a bit of waffle. Um, the other thing I will bring up, because I started thinking about her just before this reading, if I, I might even put a picture of her up on the screen or something so that you can see Princess uh, Mary of, I think it's Denmark, Princess Mary Donaldson. She's an Australian girl who was born in, in Tasmania, Australia. And anyway, she ends up meeting and marrying the Crown Prince of Denmark, would you believe? Um, and I've studied her chart quite a bit and she's got this absolutely beautiful exalted Venus I'm pretty sure and I mean look at the life you know she went from this humble girl in a small town in a small part of Australia to wearing some of the most expensive jewels in the world um, you know marrying a very nice man who's completely in love with her and, you know living in the best places enjoying all the best of life right all the best Venusian stuff so I always like looking at her as an example of Venus and I think the thing that she has done is just in a very elegant and graceful way she's she has accepted she's received she's been able to receive and that's a really big energy with Venus as well can you receive and yeah a lot of times we don't have room because we've got other emotions going on right and I think yeah, hopefully, you know, studying a, a card reading like this. Let's see where we go with this. I have um, studied the cards beforehand, just so that you know. So I know what's coming. But, um, you know, when I start to speak, messages will just come through. So we'll see how where it goes. But I have an idea as to what's here. I know some card readers do do that. As with any card reading that I do, um, or any reading that I do, know that this is just a tool. It's just a way of frameworking the abstract, okay? And what I need you to do is use your intuition as you listen to my words. Use your intuition, see how it feels, take what resonates, reject what doesn't work for you. Um, of course, if you get halfway into one of these readings and you discover, oh, this isn't me, then of course click off and watch something else. Um, and of course, you'll need to use your intuition to pick between group one group two or group three so I shall leave you to it have it have a think which one you want and we will begin hi there group number one okay let's take a look at your cards and what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you see them one by one in turn and you allow the imagery to come into your mind and see what these cards are saying to you. So we've got this card, Treasure Island, the number nine. So you can take a look at that. We've got the Simplicity card, feeling light as a feather. I love that one. I love all of these. I just think the visuals are so lovely. I'm going to be moving these about so just trying to fit them on the screen here okay we've got the page of swords in reverse this is from the morgan greer tarot i think but it's a kind of smaller version of it it's very nice i love it i'll put the names below because i know somebody asked for that last time queen of swords in reverse i love this card how beautiful And then we've got the Four of Pentacles upright. Okay, a lot of yellow, a lot of third chakra, material security, all that kind of thing. All right, now we've got 
Sahasrara, Sahasrara. This is all about the crown chakra. That fits just about. And Venus, what kind of Venus do you have? You have got Venus in the eighth house. And this is the North Indian style chart that we use. And do you know, it's really interesting. Western astrologers used to use this a couple of hundred years ago, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I saw it on a Cambridge University website that was some historical thing. And I'll see if I can find that again, it would be worth sharing. But anyway, that is Venus in the eighth. All right, so hopefully you've had a couple of moments to take all of these in and to get a feel. So that says simplicity. Let's just make sure all of these fit. I think they do. I think this is a nice little spread. Okay, so what is my interpretation of this? Well, I will tell you. <laughs> the first thing that really struck me out of all that's going on here was the turtle. Absolutely drew my eye first straight away. And then as I started looking, well, I started making all these connections and I'm gonna tell you what they all are. So the turtle instantly reminded me of Vedic mythology, Hindu mythology, the churning of the ocean. Now the oceans got churned because I believe the gods were trying to, they knew that there was treasure within the ocean and the gods were trying to bring that out. They were trying to bring out the Amrita, the nectar of immortality. And they, they needed a turtle to sit actually at the bottom of the ocean and then I think they had a mountain and they had a snake and they churned, they, used, they wrapped the snake around the mountain and they churned um, the ocean and the mountain sat on the turtle's back, right? It's a very Indian thing. The symbolism of a turtle is that the earth sits on the turtle's back. That is known. And when I was looking at this card, straight away I just thought, oh my God, this is like the churning of the ocean. And I got all excited because I thought, wow. And, but I was thinking, okay, what does this mean for you, right, who's come here to listen? So I'm getting the impression that you are the turtle. Now, in this card, because we've also got a number nine here, which is completion. It's also like the top of the energy. So in tarot, it's like, it's like sort of you're just on the brink of completion or you're just you just but you're working really hard as well okay nine can be like it's at the top of the energy so you're, you're working 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 or you've been doing it for a long time or something like that but you know while this says treasure island and that might be like oh wow you're gonna i don't know find your treasure any day soon i actually don't read it exactly in that way i'm seeing it that you are the turtle and you're at the bottom of the ocean. Okay, now why am I saying you're at the, the bottom of the ocean? Because of the Venus placement. Venus here in the eighth, in that the still deep, deep, deep still waters of Scorpio, right? The water is deep here and you are deep in that water and you are the turtle. Okay, you are this. And and I think as well, you, you're extremely kind, okay? There's a soft underbelly of the um, turtle that sits on the earth, that, that hugs and touches the earth. All this hard work is happening on your back, right? And there are other people involved here as well. It could well be that you're working really hard for other people. Um, <coughs> apologies. For the minor coughing, <laughs> I'm perfectly fine. Um, let's have a look here. Other people, hey. This is in connection with other people. I think you're working extremely hard. I think there's a lot of pressure on you. I think there's a lot of pressure on your back. I think a lot of people are, and, I, and you're extremely kind. You, you're you're very generous, and you're you're making a lot happen. But what I get the sense is that 
at some point you're going to have to come up for air. And you haven't been, because the only two air cards that we've got here are these two, and they're reversed. Okay, and now what that is telling me, yeah, there's no clarity, Page of Swords in reverse. There's not much clarity in your situation or in your life right now. Uh, and this is reversed as well. Queen of Swords reversed is... Again, there's no clarity. There can be a coldness attached with that or there can be a bitterness. I mean, if this situation continues for too long of you being that turtle and the, like all that pressure on your back and everybody is, um, you know, and I know you're probably very vital and, and um, fulfilling some sort of very important thing. I can see that. There are other people involved. Venus down here in the eighth. So it's probably very needed and, I, and it's linking in with security. This situation is definitely link, linking in with security where you feel like I have to, I have to be there doing this. If I don't, then the whole world will collapse. I understand that. But what the cards are asking is that the solution here is definitely simplicity. You're going to have to simplify your life. You're going to have to simplify this and all that weight on your back. Really, really important. You're too far down in these deep waters. You haven't had a breath for a long time. There's no air for you. You're doing it because you think that there's security and that you have to, but the cards are kind of telling me you don't have to. Uh, that it's going to involve a change of a frame of mind type of change. So now this is... We're looking at the seventh chakra here and there are insights coming in for you like little raindrops now it's coming but they're tiny raindrops and you're not able to feel those raindrops because you're too deep down in here you're too much in the deep water so you're going to need to come up you and really to balance yourself it is to become lighter or um, to come up for air, you know. Um, definitely you need to come up for air. It's, it's like the Sagittarius Gemini line. It's like that. So that's here. That's these two. I always think that when things get too deep, when you're in this position, you need to come up here for air. So that's why comedians are up here in Gemini in the third, right? They know how to come up for air. I feel like you need to come up for air is what you need to do. And if you do that, and if you simplify life, if you simplify life, if you come up for air from this situation, and if you can just tune into that, that crown chakra of yours, feel light, if you can visualize light coming into the top of your head, and if you can do that more uh, and more often, the insights and the wisdom are going to come in for you. Okay, they're, currently they're falling, the insights are falling like little droplets of rain or something, right? But they're not falling on your head because you're too deep down in here. And what you need to do is you need to come up for air, you need to come back to this earth plane, you need to feel those raindrops and those raindrop-like ideas. They'll just start sprinkling on your head, you'll just start getting ideas, guidance. Uh, the guidance wants to come through for you. You don't need anyone, okay? You don't need outside intervention or help or, you know, you don't need to, um, you don't need anyone. What you need is to tune into you, to tune into that crown chakra, feel the top of your head energetically, start to feel the insights and ideas, the guidance, the wisdom, it's coming. It's, it's falling like raindrops, it's coming in for you. Okay, now as for this card spread, in answer to the question of do you feel you deserve success all right let's just take a quick look at these cards in that context do you feel you deserve success I would say you do Venus is in a really nice position here I like Venus down here I know sometimes it can be a bit problematic um, 
But I do like Venus down there. She likes to be down there too. Um, do you feel you deserve success? I, I would say that you, you do, but at the moment you... Um, I would say it's not high. Your deservability feeling is not high. It's kind of uh, maybe about sort of maybe halfway. I don't know if I have to quantify it, but like it's, um, and I've seen the other uh, piles. Pile three, for example, they seem to feel very deserving. So if you want to go and have a look at those cards, though they've got some cards which are indicating to me that they're quite high on the deservability scale. I feel like you are the, the treasure and everything and the Amrita and it's all here for you. But it's like, I feel like maybe you're overcomplicating life right now or you're feeling too much the burden as opposed to feeling the lightness. When you feel the lightness, these will come up right okay so let's let's take the example that you do feel uh, deserving these will become upright when you start to feel the lightness of life when you stop focus so when yep let's block the turtle <laughs> so maybe the turtle has come up the air and you have simplified your life you are starting to follow those intuitive hits that are coming into your crown chakra you're feeling them and you're becoming clear it, the clarity is just coming in for you okay um, and this would even improve as well that would this card is kind of showing that you are let's see you're kind of holding on to your money you're, there's a tightness um, you'll be able to release and let more in this will improve as well simplify these swords will become upright giving you mental clarity giving you ability to have insight and in a sharp but kind way because you are kind you're inherently kind i can see that here with the turtle you're a very kind person that's probably why you've allowed yourself to to be under this amount of burden but you will be able to like a queen of swords like a very sharp intelligent lady just make things clear uh, for those around you you know put up your boundaries and say well excuse me, <laughs> you know, um, but some of us in the world need a little bit of time <laughs> or whatever it is. Um, but honestly, I, I would say that you, do you feel like you deserve success from your Venus position? Yeah, I, I think you do. I think, but I, I do think there's a little bit of work to do and it's around just mm, don't complicate life, make things simpler and really try and feel your crown chakra or do some crown chakra work and that should really help you all right group one well i hope that was a good reading for you uh, please do leave me a comment and i look forward to seeing you next time hi group two are you ready for your reading i've got your cards they are absolutely beautiful we'll go through them in turn so that you also get a chance to take in the beautiful imagery and the symbolism. See what comes into your intuition as I go through these. So we've got come to the edge. Such a beautiful card. It looks like she's dancing. Really stunning. I always love the faces that are hidden in mysterious places in this deck. You'll see them in the clouds, in all kinds of places. Put it in the earth this time, I think. Let's have a look. Yeah, it looks so. It's coming up on the camera, so that's good. All right, so we've got come to the edge, put it at the edge. <laughs> we've got opportunity. Oh, wow, I just love this card for you. Isn't that beautiful? And look at that magic sky in the background. Love that. Okay, so we're going to, we've got a little bit of a real estate issue here. So <laughs> just going to kind of, we know there's a moon. Don't worry, I'll be moving these around as we go. There's a new moon there so that you remember. Okay, we've got tarot-wise, we've got temperance in reverse. We have got the seven of swords in reverse. And we've got perhaps one of the best cards in the deck upright, <laughs> the world, which I love. It's a really pretty one. 
This is the Morgan Greer deck. I should hope, I, th I think I'll remember to um, put the name of all of these in the description below and look at this tapas. Isn't that beautiful? I just love these cards. Okay. And then we've got Venus. Aha, uh -huh, Venus in the sixth house. And this is the sidereal Vedic um, chart system. That's Venus there in the sixth. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a little bit of time to see what comes into your mind, into your intuition. But I'll, I'll tell you how I'm reading these and what's coming into my, into my mind. It's a really interesting spread, this one. Because it's showing me that you're on the brink. You are absolutely on the brink of some things. We've got opportunity here. This is the new thing on the horizon for you. And that's coming. That's there. It's not able to come in just yet, though. You're still completing. You're still on the very brink of completing. We've got a 36 here, which means 9 equals 3 plus 6 is 9. And she's dancing. She's on the edge. Come to the edge. One of the symbolisms here is about the fact that, you know, as she dances on this small patch of earth, there is fear here. And there is this concept of risk in this card, which is that she she's afraid that if she goes over the edge, she might not fly or, or this feeling of what's going to happen, right? Uh, so you're on the brink. Now, what are you on the brink of? You're on the brink of this, the world. Completion is here. It's like it's manifested in the form of this card. So completion is here in this now moment right here. So that's wonderful. And it's here for you. But it's like, but it's this. It's this stretch here. Actually, even all of this, <laughs> which is showing me where you are right now. So where you are right now is in a place of um, you're working too hard. These two are showing me that. So let's take a look at these two. Temperance in reverse is showing some form of extreme and it's usually, this is usually a healing card or a care card or, or that kind of thing. Uh, I have interpreted it in this occasion as working too hard. Now we've got tapas here and it's really interesting because in the third reading we do have um, a card come up that is very similar to tapas as well. This is a card of discipline. This is a card of that you will do what it takes. You will work hard. You, you know how to do that. Or you've done a lot of that in your life. So much so that it's making me think that from what I'm seeing here, I'm thinking you're working too hard is what I'm seeing. So you're, you're working extremely hard. So you've got that down, right? And that hard work that you're doing has probably manifested this. You've got this. The other thing is we've got this beautiful Venus in the sixth house, which is normally a position of um, debilitation, actually. But so, and I spoke about this actually in my October review. I talked about the fact that Venus in Virgo or Venus in the sixth house, a debilitated Venus, is is not a bad thing. It's it's actually quite beautiful. Um, also because she's in a really great friend's place as well. And I, what I find is that people with this placement, they are usually people of very refined taste. They're good artists. They've got an artistic eye. They've got artistic abilities of some kind. What else is beautiful about this? And they're very hardworking. They're very, very good workers. So I think you've got all of that going on. Let's have a look here. Got discipline, you're working hard. Yeah, the other thing is with this spread is how the question of how would you treat. Okay, so you're working really hard, you've manifested the result. It hasn't come in yet. It wants to. And when and when, well, when you complete, it's like an entirely new level of life is going to open up. 
and that's this. So that's that's all in the wings, it's all there. It's just about how do we get you over the edge, right? Or how do we get you to that place? And, and that's right, when I looked at these cards briefly earlier, I was thinking that like, hard work, Venus in, in Virgo, right? You know how to work hard, you're very good at that. You've probably got some artistic abilities and skills as well. You've got the discipline, you are overworking, so this is where the problem might be. And sometimes, you know, sometimes when we want something too much, that energy is actually pushing it away. There's that as well, right? Now what's this all about? This, the Seven of Swords in reverse. I took this to mean that this time around you need another approach. So whatever it is that you're doing that's blocking the thing that you want or whatever that is, it's like, I think, yeah, I think you're working too hard. So these two, a different approach is needed. The different approach, that's right, can come in because I was thinking about this Venus here. I was thinking about like, if you were to ask, oh, no, not ask, if you were to like, think about how you treat yourself and then think about would I treat my friend this way? Or would I treat a little child this way, right? And you might not, you might, with the friend, you might be a lot nicer. With that little child, you might be a lot nicer. So why aren't you being nicer to you? Okay, so that's my big question for you, is why aren't you being nicer to you? And look, it might just be that you can get, you can get a lot of contentment from a reading like this, because you can see in a manifest way that the completion has been manifested and the new opportunity is here. And this new moon, this new plane, the new plane that you're going to get to, it's here. I feel like it's, um, it's not too much work. I feel like it's not too much more work for you to get here and to be then experiencing this. I feel like you're not far away. I also want to look at these cards in very much in the context of this question. Do you feel you deserve success? So that's the question that I'm going to be putting in the title. Now if I take a look at this spread, do you feel like you deserve success? I would say you do. A large part of you does because you have manifested the success. It's here. It's on the table, literally. But it's like there is something that you're doing within the remainder of these cards. And it is, it's too much work because this is the discipline thing here, which is very admirable. And even this as well, this can be quite a position of just work, work, work. Um, you see, there's no romance in this spread as such. I don't think it's romance that you're wanting. If, if you are after a bit of romance, you can have a look at group three. <laughs> I got a little bit going on there, but um, I think for you, it's the success is the thing that you want and would I say from this spread that you feel that you deserve it I you do but there's you there's some work to be done around deservability um, and how what can you do in order to get there right so this is something that I found just recently from a guy called Captain Sinbad. If you want, you can, oh, maybe I'll put it in the description below. I'll remember to do that. He talks about affirmations and he talks about, by the way, can you hear that sound in the background? I apologize if you can. It's just the taps are going. Okay, Captain Sinbad, right? He did this really brilliant video. This was, I think I watched it yesterday. I'll link to it below. He talked about affirmations and he talked about why affirmations never really worked for him. And he gave a secret as to how to make them work. He said that he's tried doing affirmations and he'll just say them every day or whatever, but it never really worked. And then he gave this secret and this trick to making it work. What he would do is he would visualize himself doing the work needed to get the affirmation done. And I thought, wow, that is such a brilliant thing. I've never heard anyone else say that. And I think it's such a great idea. And he, he would, because you think about it, sometimes if we're visualizing, okay, I want this amazing car or this amazing house or this amazing 
relationship or whatever and it, like the secret you know they would teach us to like visualize it and it'll fall into your lap or whatever that doesn't really work and what he said is that that never really worked for him it might work for some people but what he explained is that he would visualize himself in his everyday life doing the things he knew that he needed to do in order to make that happen and for me that that brings it right home because you start visualizing you in your space you start visualizing you in your space getting up early you start envisaging you doing that extra bit of exercise before breakfast you visualize you you know making those extra instagram posts or whatever it is that you need to do right because those are actually the things that are going to get you there so yes do your affirmations write them down and also visualize the potentially boring things aha i see why i'm saying that we've got venus in this house okay i was, <laughs> I was wondering why am i saying this okay this is coming from venus herself <laughs> Thank you, Venus. I needed some help here because <laughs> I got distracted from the noise of the taps. I get distracted easily. Um, yeah, I get it. Okay, you're going to have to visualize yourself, absolutely, doing some of the boring stuff that you know is going to take you to success. It might mean you have to visualize yourself doing your accounts. It might mean, because you know, okay, we want all this money, but do we know how to manage it? Do we know what a account to put it in? Or do we know, you know, if we want our company to grow huge, okay, do we know how to manage share options and this and that and all that big stuff, right? All that big, boring stuff. Yeah, we need to know how to do that. And that's what this Venus here is, is talking about. Okay, I get it. I am going to link for you guys below Captain Simbad. Check him out. I really love that video. He basically shares that very important secret. Visualize, um, the, as well as doing the affirmations, visualize the boring stuff, you in your environment, wearing your hoodie and your clothes and whatever you've got now. <laughs> like visualize your actual life, but that it's happening and you're doing it and that you've got the energy to do it. So group number two, I hope that was useful. Please drop me a like or a comment or whatever, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Hi, group three. Are you ready for your reading? I hope so. I'm just going to make sure I'm recording. Yes, I am. Let's see what cards you've got. Oh, that's right. I really like your set. You've got a very sweet set, <laughs> starting with milk and honey. Look at that. And there's a face there. Isn't that amazing? It's one of the things I love about this deck. There's always like a face in a mysterious place. That rhymes. Okay, we've got diligence here. And as you look at these, see what symbolism pops out for you. See what you really like the look of. By the way, this is a bit, it's a bit tight real estate here, but don't worry, I will be shuffling them around, moving them around anyway. You have got the Ace of Cups. Hang on, I'll let you see it in full. Isn't that stunning? I love this card. It's so beautiful. It's one of my favorite cards ever. I think everybody loves that card. It represents all the best in life. Got the Four of Wands in reverse. Still a very good card, even though it's in reverse. Don't you worry, we're going to have a look at how to to flip it back around. Okay, we've got the moon. Love that. It's also one of my favorite cards, I think. And you've got Parvati. You've got a goddess coming in for you. How beautiful. So you've got a goddess. The first group had Chakra come in. And then the second group, I think, had, well, it had Tapas. I guess the concept of discipline, which Parvati definitely had a lot of discipline. It's beautiful, but you've got an actual goddess present here, so that's pretty amazing. And you have got Venus in the 11th house, possibly one of the best places ever for Venus to be. Uh, the person that I know 
like celebrity charts who I love, who has a Venus in the 11th house, is Zoella Sugg. And I think she's an excellent example of, she is a British YouTuber. She's very successful. I've watched a lot of her videos. I just love her. And yeah, I mean, wow, Venus in the 11th. She's got a couple of other things in there. She's got a terrific 11th house that's really working for her in this incarnation. Okay, so let's take a look for you. What's going on? Well, I would say, you know, actually, <laughs> the first thing that occurred to me is, well, firstly, you've got a very good spread. So a lot is going right in your world, I would say. The, the thing that occurred to me for you this time, for me, it was really, it was really this, the milk and honey card and the moon together. I was looking at both of these together and I was seeing that, ah, I think, and, and I, I know you might think this is a very literal interpretation of this, but hear me out. I was thinking about your diet, actually. And I was thinking about, because we are talking about Venus, we are talking about deservability, worth. And for me, this group really, um, what came up here was, for me, the concepts of your physical body and how do you feel about it? And do you need to change your diet at all? I know that sounds probably a bit strange <laughs> because I've never watched a tarot reading where they talk about your weight. I've never seen that. Um, I saw one once a long time ago where the person did talk about health, but you, it's hard to find those. A lot of people don't talk about that, but it's come up for this spread. And this is what came into my intuition. What came up in my intuition was this thing about your diet. Now it could be about how you feel about your physical body. It could be that, and weight did come up as a thing. So you might feel like you have to lose weight. You might feel like you want to put it on. Me, I'm in a position, I want to put it on. I don't feel my ideal weight. Um, I'm trying to put it on. And you know, that can be a challenge too right um but there's something about you not feeling 100 percent about your physique and that is definitely something that that came through in this in this spread by the way is that light problematic or is it helpful maybe i should just i think that's a bit better isn't it okay so that came up as a thing to talk about Yeah, I mean, look, all the best of life is here for you. You've manifested this card. You know what I mean? Like, this is, this is one of the best cards you can ever get. This is love. This is romance. All the best feelings. This is those exalted Venus kind of feelings. And look, you've got, I mean, she's basically there almost in her exalted position. But she's in the wish fulfillment position as well. So your wishes are going to be fulfilled for sure with all of this. But if there's something that's not quite going right, and I suspect, okay, that's the other thing that came up. Where are things not going right in your life? Now, if you look at the other two readings, I do think those were about work. Yours is about, I would say, your physical body as well as your love life or your family, okay? Something's not right, either in your partnership or with family at the moment. Um, and the other thing here with, with Parvati here is maybe your, and this diligence card, I mean, this is quite incredible because you know the story about her, right? That she, she worked extremely, extremely, extremely hard to be noticed by Lord Shiva who of course did notice her and marry her. And he admired and loved the, the diligence, the hard work. She, I think, stood, was it in a river on one foot for like thousands of years, um, something like that. So, well, let's hope you don't have to do that anytime soon. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, she put in the diligence, she did all of that, and she got her happy home, right? She got that. But for you right now, what I'm sensing and feeling, because that's in its reversed position, I'm getting a sense that there's something's not 100% right. 
right, either in your love life or, f or family life, something like that. But it's a tiny, tiny thing. And when we look at the question of do you feel you deserve success, which I put in the title, I would say you absolutely do. I'd say that you don't have any problems with that. I'd say that your deservability level is very high. Um, you feel very worthy of all the good in the world and the abundance. There's just, there's something about how to resolve this very small thing, which is very small, guys, it's nothing major. Because look at that, you've got the discipline and the diligence. You've got Parvati come through for you. You might not think you do. Ah, yes, this, okay. This also came up when I was thinking about you guys. Mm, what you need to do, and so this, again, it might sound a bit weird, but in order to be able to better use your intuition, you might need to drop something from your diet, okay? And I've had to go through this. I've had to clean up, you know, my life. So um, I've, yeah, I've definitely cleaned up the food side of things. I think because I had to, because I became a bit unwell. And so, you know, because I was really struggling to get off coffee because I love coffee. I love cappuccinos and lattes. <laughs> like, and I would always have like a nice little kind of treat or a cookie or something with it. It was always my treat thing. And I found it really hard to get rid of it. And I knew my angels wanted me to get rid of it. And they would like, boy, were they sending me signals. In the end, they had to make me quite a bit sick. And I've done it now. <laughs> I've managed to totally stop that. But um, there might be something that you also need to change diet-wise. And I would say, don't be hard on yourself. Don't be strict on yourself. You will be guided what to do. For me, it took many years to get off coffee and yeah, um, I know about that whole process. But I tell you, whatever it is, and it doesn't mean that you have to do it forever. Maybe you have to do it for a time. Maybe you have to change your diet for a time. And then, you know, at a later time, a year or two down the track or whenever it is, you might go back to that thing or whatever, right? But I get the sense that that is the small piece of work you need to do to make this a totally happy picture, right? As you can see, you've only got one in reverse. So this is, this is a very good, bright picture here. So I say that your deservability level is very high. Okay, let's just make that upright for you. Go on, you're going to do it because you've got the discipline, the diligence. You've got Paravati's amazing strength and discipline. You've got that, even though you might not think you do. And yeah, I've gone through periods of just finding it hard or being lazy or whatever. I've done all that. But then equally, you know, um, I'm in Satin Mahadasha now, so I've got no option. <laughs> I have to be disciplined. But let's have a look at this, um, this Venus here. Wishes. I mean, that's a terrific Venus placement. If I could, yeah, if I could put her anywhere, I'd put her here or up in the 12th, absolutely. Love, love, love that Venus placement. So you've got that, you've got this, you've got the discipline, the diligence to transform your life. The other reason I thought about food for you guys and diet as a solution, look at those fields, check that out. I got all this farmland in the background, it really got me thinking about food and I feel like you need a discipline there because this is also about nourishment, okay? Self-nourishment, how do you nourish yourself? So when I mentioned earlier that there've been a lot of things I've had to give up and clean up and this and that, well, I mean, one of the things I've given up is TV for sure. I can't stand TV, <laughs> but like, um, there's so much wonderful stuff to watch out there on YouTube that's quality and, that isn't designed to brainwash you. So that's what I like to watch. So it, you might have to be cleaning up your um, your diet of what you consume in that way. But I mean, I still watch a bit of, you know, Made in Chelsea or something like that. That's like a, I, what do they have in America? It's called The Hills or something. I don't know, but <laughs> I still watch a bit of rubbish now and then. But um, yeah, look, I mean, I, I still eat some, you know, foods that aren't, perfect but um but i feel like 
you work out some little dietary thing here and this, this intuition of yours is going to be epic. You are going to be able to guide yourself to this totally happy picture that's full of abundance where you're being nourished, the happy home, the love and the romance, you know, this goddess here, um, this beautiful energy that Zoe Sugg, you know, let's check out Zoella, look at some of her vlogs, you know, she's got this Venus in the 11th house going on, it's just magnificent. So group number three, you know, in answer to this question, do you feel you deserve success? I think you absolutely do. And I think it's not going to take very much work at all for you to really, you know, transform the small issues that you've got in this space. You can really, you can really make this a, a very beautiful picture. And look at that number six there. Six in tarot is a beautiful number. It's, um, it's the one to have. <laughs> All right, well, Group 3, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please do leave me a like and a comment, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Mm -hmm.